I have read the first chapter of this, the first section, and it's got a great title. I love this, man. I love it. Carnival of Despair. One, the whole carnival aspect fits right in with the Joker, right? Evil clown, right? And so what evil clowns got going on? Carnivals. Circuses. I love the motif. What a great little picture, huh? He looks so cute. Uh, anyway, this whole chapter. Gosh, how do I even start this? So they did a heist at the end of the last book, in the last uh, chapter, the last volume. And the heist went badly. There was no money for them in the heist. So he hit an armored car. There was no cash on the armored car. Joker's broke. Joker is now despondent. He's like, man, I can't even knock off an armored car and get money. I, the Joker, a man who has bajillions of dollars, I have to rely upon charity. And that charity is Bruce is in Wayne Manor. Um, and I really like the kind of meta commentary from the, the author here. Maybe he would become a more decent Batman if he were raised here. Correct. <laughs> Not a bad location. Batman's base is already just below the mansion, so he knows where Batman's base is, bro. I imagine. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I imagine your fans would shudder at the alternative I offer. Again, correct. All true. Uh, so, you know, the narrator here is just absolutely trashing the Joker as the Joker's trashing himself. It's kind of a fun little meta discourse between the character and the omnipotent voice of basically the character. Hmm. So, Joker's in the dumps. He is so in the dumps that, uh, well, see you around, Batsy. He's so in the dumps, he is going to leave baby Bruce, baby Batman, in the care of Alfred, the butler. And uh, poor Alfred, you know, I have an idea, Mr. Bruce. After dinner, would you like to play in our secret underground base? The Batcave is just for you and me. Won't that be fun? And he's got kind of a... A crazed manic thing going on here. It's absolutely fantastic. It's wonderful to see. Uh, from the, the perspective of me, the reader, for him, the person going through this, it is not nearly so fantastic. It is not. So now we kind of see how this is going, right? Like the last issue, or the last volume, we were setting up a conflict between Mr. Joker and Mr. Alfred, and now that conflict is starting to play out. But there's one thing that neither of them really thought about. The person they're fighting over. Who's he going to pick? How is this going to go down? And so that's the conflict in this chapter. This is not a funny chapter. I mean, there's a couple of funny uh, panels as the Joker's like being crazed and stuff. But this one like hits kind of heavy. This one hits kind of hard because it's about paternity, fatherhood responsibility, family, bringing families together, that kind of stuff. I'm very interested to see where we're going to go in the next chapter. The uh, struggle here in this section is very well resolved. I enjoyed reading it. It was fantastic. I'm going to say that a lot about this book. I've been saying a lot. I'm going to keep saying it because it's true. This story understands Batman stuff better than a lot of DC books, and I don't even know how that's possible, man. So yeah, that was uh, the first... Uh, oh man, we the cardboard has broken the book. But uh, Carnival of Despair was great. And uh, I, I, gotta, I gotta go read the next section right now, man. I'm gonna go dip into Why So Serious and see what's going on here. You all take care of yourselves. You have a great one. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Hope to see you again next time. Until then, bye-bye.